Warning, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our presentation today, welcoming you to the new Akuhuai Library. My name is Lori Sabata, and I am going to serve as your technical producer for today. And what I'd like to do um, before we kind of get started here is to go ahead and um, just make sure that everyone can hear it okay and that they can see okay. Um, so if you would go ahead and um, just, you, you should have on your control panel um, a way of raising your hand. So if you can hear what I'm saying and you can see the screen, if you would just go ahead and click that little hand on your screen and that lets me know that um, everything is going okay. And it looks like it is because people are raising their hands. So thank you for doing that. Appreciate that. Um, and in a moment, I'm going to um, introduce our presenter for the day. Well, I guess I'll do it now. Um, Emily Glenn, um, the Kuhuai librarian, will be our presenter for today. And in a moment, I'll let Emily introduce herself properly. And um, I just wanted to go through a few housekeeping things, um, that being that um, we're going to go through, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes to half an hour of presentation and um, demos for the new library. And then um, we'll turn it over to questions and answers. And the way we're going to handle that is um, we're going to have the, the, we have the audience muted, so to ask a question, you would just type a question into the question box on your control panel there, and you don't have to wait till the end of the presentation to ask a question. If you think of something, you know, while you're watching the presentation, go ahead and type it in the question box, and then we'll, we'll take care of those um, towards the end of the presentation. And also feel free to, you know, send me a chat message or anything if, you're having any kind of technical problems like you can't see or hear. So um, so with that out of the way, um, welcome, Emily. I'm going to pass it over to you, and we can get started. Thank you, Lori. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for attending the webinar. Um, as uh, Lori mentioned, I am Emily Glenn. I am a Kuhuai's librarian. I've been with the Kuhuai's for a little over eight years now. Um, since 2007. I am the association's second librarian. The first one was hired about a year before I was, and she stayed with them for about a year. Um, and in that time, uh, the organization has gone through a great deal of change as far as information resources and what we have on hand. Um, and we're still going through a lot of change. And a great deal of that change can be attributed to our members' efforts in creating resources that can be put in the library, because the library isn't a lot of good without um, information in it. And so our members have done a great job of generating materials um, that we can put in there and that other people can refer to later. Um, first, I'll just do this overview of the library and um, in this lovely little Prezi web um, um, Prezi presentation, and then we'll actually visit the library itself, and I'll do a couple of demos showing how you can do searches to find what you need. Um, so first, what we have in the library, um, we have presentations from Akuhawai events. These are probably the things that um, Akuhawai members access the most from the library. Um, namely, the presentations are from the annual conference an exposition, the Business Operations Conference, the Living Learning Programs Conference, and the Facilities Conference. Um, and these date from around 2006, 2007, when the previous librarian started. And then I continued uh, her practice of cataloging those presentations. So um, any other um, events like those that happened during that time, such as Jazz It Up, um, the conference, operations conference, that kind of thing, those are in there as well. Um, but from before that time, we don't have as many conference presentations because at that time they just weren't kept. Um, we also don't tend to catalog um, things like NHTI since that's a rather exclusive event. And sometimes um, the presentations at it are more lectures even than um, uh, PowerPoints. That's something that can be easily saved. Um, we also have sample documents. Um, these are things um, either submitted by individual members or often they're collected by work groups. Our Marketing and Communications Committee has done a great deal of work in this area and also our assignments 
um, a work group has also collected documents for us. Um, so these things might be um, a sample uh, hall um, rule book, uh, maybe marketing materials, that kind of thing. Um, you know, next year room assignment, sign up plan, so forth. Um, and these are meant to be examples to other members of how um, their uh, colleagues handled a situation or how they produced a certain material. And um, also we have theses and dissertations donated by members. So um, if you write something like that and you have permission from your institution to donate it to us, we would very much appreciate it. We also have articles from Kuhuai Publications, uh, namely the Talking Stick Magazine and the Journal of College and University House Student Housing. We have both. We have articles from both of those publications from their inception. Um, I think the Talking Stick is the early 80s, and the Journal is the late 70s. Um, the older um, items, the older articles from the older issues of those publications are are PDFs. Um, I have a couple of interns who spent a lot of time with our copier scanner and made PDFs of those items so that you can see them. And then in the past uh, four or five years, we've started using Nextbook, which is an electronic publication um, uh, software. And so those issues are in Nextbook format. Um, so there, the, when you see the catalog record, which we will in a minute, um, there's links at the bottom of both, but one leads you to next book for the newer issues, and the older issues are PDF saved, saved within the catalog. We also, um, a part of the library's mission is to keep the historic and operational documents for the association. Um, so this includes executive board and foundation board meeting minutes from their inceptions, and um, event materials and association publications. Um, this also includes, interestingly, um, the earliest meeting minutes that we have from, um, the, let's see, 1948, when the association wasn't even actually an association yet. Um, they were just a gathering of housing officers who hadn't decided yet whether to form an association. Um, and in those very early years, they uh, generally had a scribe in the room who would just write down everything the presenter said and everything the audience asked about or commented on. Um, so you can read those pages and really get an idea of what it was like to be there and what people at the 1948, 1949, 1950 conference were talking about. And it's very interesting in that it's sometimes um, very different than the issues that are coming up now, and sometimes it's very much the same. Um, and we also have event materials um, from Akuhawai's uh, past events, um, including those that um, careful documentation of the very early conferences, conference programs, um, that kind of thing, and also association publications. Um, some association publications are um, cataloged in the catalog, and, um, but are not available in full text because they're um, available for purchase in the bookstore. Um, but also some older ones, we're happy to make a, you know, a PDF of whatever you need from it and send it to you. So just ask and we'll let you know. What we don't have, here is the sad part. Um, we don't have articles from publications other than our own because we don't have the rights to them. Um, but I can provide citations for members and full text articles for individuals. So if you write me and um, you need information on a certain topic, um, I'm happy to send you citations from both our own journal and other academic journals. And then if those articles are something that you're interested in, I can send you the full text as, you know, I can send you as an individual the full text of those articles, but obviously I can't catalog them in the library since they aren't ours. Another thing we don't have is uh, regional boards and meeting minutes or their conference presentations, kind of out of our scope. Um, if um, you watch this whole presentation and you're like, well, that was very nice, but 
um, research isn't really my thing and I still feel like I'm, you know, not maybe doing this right, that is okay. I'm happy to help you by sending you citations, resources, links, um, and hopefully get you going in the right direction. And, um, th and this is an Akuhai member service and this is a service for you whether you're doing research on behalf of your department, um, such as your supervisor said, I want to know all about X. Um, or if you are doing research for your, your master's work or your PhD work, um, I have definitely um, helped many people figure out whether they had done their due diligence and article searches and so forth, and I'm happy to do so. It's my job, and I like research personally, so that's why I'm here. Um, in addition to um, the actual, the pulling out of information, I've also, my job has changed in a few recent years to more generating resources and assisting AKUHI members and volunteers who are generating resources. Um, I work with the research and information, the assessment, and the sustainability advisory committee, uh, as well as the EBI user group. And I also should have mentioned on here the public policy advisory committee. Uh, and all of these work groups work to um, either serve as resources themselves to the membership, such as the assessment and the EBI user group, um, and the, or they uh, tend to generate a lot of materials for research and um, information purposes, such as the research and information committee and the sustainability advisory and the public policy. Um, so, and the big goal of the Akuhuai, um, this board, and um, the Research and Information Committee uh, is to generate more materials that we can use to prove the usefulness and the effectiveness of on-campus housing. So um, look for more of that in coming years um, because that has um, been stated as a major goal of ours to have more of that kind of thing on hand and generated by us. I also work on Akuhuai's operational survey, which will be opening pretty soon, and um, that will also get us a lot of information that we have been needing for a long time about um, campus housing in general, not just Akuhuai members, but pretty much any institution out there that has campus housing. Uh, goals for future exploration for the library, um, in addition to things I just mentioned. Um, as I mentioned, there's a models library, um, but I would like to solicit more member contributions um, and more work group contributions to that um, of research and sample documents. And I just haven't had as much time as I would like, but I'm thinking I will in 2015. Um, feel free to contact me if you're curious about that. Um, I would also like to create and pro provide more pathfinders, which is a librarian word for Basically, it's a list of citations and resources on a specific topic. Um, and this helps us get around the copyright issue because I can, of course, always um, you know, widely distribute a document that just has a citation on it to an article that I think is useful about a certain topic. Um, and then if you are interested in getting that article, you can either go to your institution's library or contact me and I'll send it to you in full text. But it gives all that information to you in one place, one handy place. Um, so that is my, those are my two of my goals for 2015 to make the library more useful and um, more user friendly. Okay, so now we're going to get ready to disembark, and I'll show you how to do a few searches in the library, and then um, you can ask any questions that I don't properly answer. So getting to the library is the first part of using the library. Um, here we are at the Kuhuai homepage. To get to the library, we're going to go up to Information Resources tab up there at the top of the page, and then select Library. And um, now we're at a little page that has all this information about the library. Um, you'll note in this text it does mention that um, you do need to log in now to use the library. Um, your login will be the same as uh, the username and password that you use to get to the directory or register for a conference. 
if you can't remember what your username and password is, um, there are instructions uh, leave down here to um, to reset it. Um, or you can call the uh, office and Walt or Kelly or will be happy to reset it for you. And it can be your own personal username and password or your, your associations, either one, uh, your institution. So if you click enter the wide library, you're going to have to put in your username and password. Mine's already saved in there. And here we go. Takes a little time for it to think about this. And sometimes it takes more time when you're on a webinar. There we are at the library homepage. Um, so, quick overview. Um, Mostly you're going to navigate within the page down here. And um, the quick search bar here, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, scroll down a little bit. Um, and you can also browse by knowledge domains, which we'll do in just a moment. Um, so um, let's say, in this sample scenario, that you are looking for um, you have been asked to think about the needs of college men on your campuses and programs and research on what they need. Um, so um, nothing here on the home page really kind of speaks directly to that. So you're going to use the quick search. Now keep in mind, this is a relatively small library. I think there's around five, 6,000 items in here, which seems like a lot, but really compared to your institution's library or even your public library, it's not, it's not terribly many. Um, so um, searching a broader term rather than a more narrow one is generally the way to go. And then when you see the results, you can see, is this what I wanted, or is this that, was that actually a little too broad, or maybe it was too narrow. Um, since this is a specialized catalog, there are a few terms that are definitely too broad. However, say if you search students, you're going to get back about every item in the library, and that would be too broad. So you have to narrow it from that. Um, but for the, most, for the most part, I'd recommend going a little broader rather than not. So let's just say men. Search. So here, is our, here are our results. So first on the top of the search, you see the catalog records that match the search. Um, the catalog records in this case will be what you're interested in. These are the presentations, um, the, the association historical documents that I mentioned, um, dissertations, papers, that kind of thing. The models library are the sample documents that I mentioned. Um, so those are things like the mar sample marketing materials, or in this case, it looks like a residence hall handbook that happens to mention men. Um, but you are looking in this pretend scenario for items and research on men's needs in residence halls. So um, the models, li models library is not likely the place you're going to find that. Um, so we can click down here to show all catalog records, because right now it's just showing us um, the f initial five matches out of 26. We'll click here to show them all. Now, if you like, you can just browse through all of these and see what looks interesting. 26 um, matches is not too difficult to get through. Um, but let's say um, you can see a few uh, journal of college and university student housing items here. Um, let's say you specifically want more academic items for this particular request. But you, so you don't want to kind of filter through all of the conference presentations, which aren't going to quite fit your need right now. So you can go to filter up here, and you can filter out the things that you don't want by telling it what you do want, which is journal items. You can also put in that filter field, say, another search term, um, such as sophomore, if you're more interested in particularly in sophomore men.
So now you've filtered out other items, and so now you have things left that are journal articles. A lot of these are from the journal issue, I think it was a year or two ago. We had a special theme issue on men's issues in residence halls. Um, so there's a fair amount of material from that for that. Um, so let's click on one of these and look at it. Um, and this is a pretty typical record for the library catalog. We have the title of the item. We have its authors. Um, we have uh, who was the editor of the journal at the time, the publication date, um, and then we have a little abstract about the article itself. Since this is a relatively recent issue of the journal, it's in the next book format that I mentioned, so the electronic um, journal. You want to copy that URL, and then open it in another window, and then paste it, and go and it will take you right to the article. And there you go. Um, if it's an older article, um, pre our next book years, which I think is around 2009, um, there will be just in this area, there will be a PDF link. It will be a bit longer and uglier than this one, I'm afraid. Um, but it's still just as useful. Copy and paste it um, into your either your existing window or new window. and um, it will be a PDF that's within the library catalog. And um, it won't be quite as slick as the next book, but it will work. Um, so that is one sample search. We'll do another one here. Um, I'd like to note that um, something that has kind of tripped me up a few times is that if you would like to go do another search, you need to go to Library Home. If you click here, it will take you back to the Kuhawai main site, um, which isn't horrible because then you can turn around and go back to the library again, but it makes an extra step for you. Um, and library home is somehow um, a bit smaller. <laughs> so and I inadvertently left myself logged in here as an administrator, so I'll log out to make sure it looks just right. It looks more or less the same. No, I have to re-enter now. I apologize. I'll go back and do another sample search. Again, it needs to think about this for a little bit. Our next sample search will be um, if you uh, read a Talking Stick article a few years ago and you remember a little bit about it, um, and now you need to find more information on it. Um, so let's say you remember a great Talking Stick article about gender-neutral housing and now your institution is um, look revisiting this topic and you need to see that article again. So let's look for gender neutral. Um, often the quick search, it is OK with dashes. So if you wanted to put a dash between gender and neutral, that would be fine. Um, it is not so OK with things like exclamation points and colons. So in general, leave out public punctuation. It won't hurt the search at all, and it may help it. Um, so here we are. There are 33 records on gender-neutral housing. Um, some of them are conference presentations. Some of them are articles. But you remember this is specifically an article that was in the talking stick. And you think it was, say, 2012. So you can also use the filter to narrow down years of publication. So you put in 2012 in here, filter out your search. And oh no, you don't see it. It is, you know, these are all conference presentations. So lovely virtual roundtable though. So serendipity, you may have found something that's very useful to you anyway. But that wasn't quite the right filter, because you know your Talking Stick article um, is in here somewhere. So you think, OK, maybe it was 2011. Filter again. And there it is, Making Gender Neutral Housing Work, the July-August issue of the Talking Stick in 2011. Um, we'll click on that record just to look at it. 
And uh, just like with the journal, there's a next book link that you can copy and paste into another window. And there's a little summary of the article, so you can be sure you got the one that you remembered. Go back to the home one more time. Uh, so often people come, as I mentioned, to look for our conference presentations. That's a huge thing that the library um, does and how uh, the men them members benefit from the library and vice versa. Um, so I really appreciate it if you pr present at a conference and you work with a volunteer to save your um, presentation on the jump drive. Um, I'm very, very thankful. Um, because it's, it would be such a pity to lose all of that great information. Um, and also it hugely benefits people not only who went to the conference, but people who weren't able to go that time around. So um, I will put links to the um, presentations in the center of the page here. And so um, until about September, there, were, um, there, were link, there was a link to the annual conference presentations. And now there's a, a link to the conference series presentations. Um, so if your conference is pretty recent, look here. There will probably be a link to all the presentations. So if you went to the Living Learning Programs and you remember a presentation that was particularly great or you need to show a coworker, um, you can click that. And you can just browse through them all until you find the one you want. Um, we got pretty much all of the presentations from that conference. So there's 55 of them, um, aside from the roundtables and things like that. They're pretty much all here. Um, and again, to see all of the presentations, so we, see, we see the first five of the catalog records. So we can just click Show All Matching Catalog Records here down at the bottom. And it will show every one of them. And you can browse through the pages using these navigation tools. Um, or, again, you can filter them if you kind of remember a little something about, say, the presenter's name or the topic. So let's say you remember it was about sophomores. Oops. Well, you know, it would help be helpful if you spell sophomores correctly. I'm sorry. I can't do a lot about that. There we go. So there were four presentations at Living Learning this year that involved the topic of sophomores. And um, let's say this is the one you went to, and it was amazing. And you want to show it to your colleague. Once again, with as with the articles, there's um, the, the author is up here. Um, the abstract is here. Um, but then the link is a little different. You have this little PDF icon thingy there. And then just a, this is a lovely, pretty hyperlink um, supporting second year success in the residence halls. And there it is. So um, that is how you get to those. And finally, back to the page again, um, just frequently asked questions kind of things. Um, over here with Quick Links, there's a Kuhuai Constitution and Bylaws. Um, there's the standards and ethical principles, um, so that's the document itself, the self-assessment guides, and then um, a number of members from the standards committee have um, put some great presentations together on how to make use of the KUHAWAI standards. So the um, links to all of those items there, publications, and then also um, the construction survey. Uh, the MGT Kuhuai Construction Survey is a really, really useful tool. It is conducted every other year. And then, then the off years, quote, so to speak, so like say 2013 and 20, um, uh, 2011, um, they revisit the data from the previous year and then present on a different aspect of it than they did the year before. So each presentation is a little different even though they have um, fresh data every other year. And um, we have copies of the construction survey presentations and um, some of the data from them in uh, the library, I think, since about 2005, 2006. Um, so search construction survey. Um, to narrow your results a little bit, actually search construction survey as it's written there with the quotes around it. 
and um, you'll come up with the previous years for the construction survey as well. Uh, but that's a super useful resource. Um, and then down here are the knowledge domains. If you just have a general interest in a certain area and you're kind of just browsing around, um, maybe see what's out there and possibly narrow your interest down, um, you can click on one of these, say Ancillary Partnerships, and it will pull back library items on that topic. So here we are. Um, yeah, and this can include anything. So it could be a presentation or say it could be a talking stick article. Um, it could be in any area. So that is a big overview on how to use the library. Um, but of course, like I said earlier, if you would just rather not, if you feel like you got enough of doing research in grad school and it is just not your bag, that is A-OK. -okay. Um, and you can feel free to email me and let me know what you need, and I or my intern will do our best to help you out and send you some resources that are useful to you. So uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, calling in today, and I hope this is very helpful. Thanks, Emily. Um, nice job. Um, I haven't seen any questions come in and uh, typed in in the question box. So um, I'm just going to give people maybe a minute to type some questions in. And also, um, while people are thinking about that and doing that, um, we are recording this. And we will be providing a link to this presentation um, for anyone who did miss it. Um, so we'll be doing that. And um, also, obviously, Emily has provided her contact information. So if you were watching today and you, you know, going into the library and trying to do something and then think of a question, obviously, you can always use her contact information to ask Emily any questions Please that you have. Do. And I'm not seeing any questions. It's looking pretty quiet. So Maybe I, I answer them all. I guess you did. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, great. Well, um, thank you, Emily, for your time today, and thank our listening audience for joining us. And I hope everyone has a great day. And um, look for the link to come out soon that you'll be able to share with others. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.